a reality TV show offers fame and life-changing opportunities, but it also comes with a lot of sacrifices. My guest on today's episode will be sharing the good, the bad, and possibly the ugly of being in the public eye. I am Tomike Adeoye, we're at 355 Restaurant and Lounge, and this is Real Talk. Let's take you back <clears throat> to the very beginning, before you became a part of a reality TV show. What was your initial plan or career path? Um, initially for me, I've, I've always been into music. So I started off as a music producer and then I got into DJing. But DJing wow. is what I've been, is what I was doing like right before Big Brother. So yeah, that's, that's, that was life for me before that. Great. She? Well, I was it. I love the silver screen. I was a model before Big Brother. Tried acting, type I flunked here and there, but was still in the part of it. And at the same time, I was, uh, let's say, the ultimate middleman. I like to try and buy and sell almost oh, wow. anything. <laughs> if I let go, you have to, <laughs> you have to do what you have to. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so that's what it was. But now I look to rule the world. You look to rule the world. Awesome. Hello, mom. Yeah. <laughs> before, before, before that. Yes. Nothing. That's you the truth. Shock me. Ah, I but have, I like I that have, you have your emotions. Yes. But you were in Lagos, right? No, I wasn't. Okay. Oh, wow. I was in school. I was quarter to drop out. Oh, wow. Where was school? The UNM, University of Nigeria. Oh, okay. Because I didn't like my course. So all I did was wake up in the morning, sleep, wake up in the morning. I used my school fees to buy a lot of things that I wanted oh, to. You're one of them. I said I was, no, no, no. I wanted to You were trying business. to flunk out. No, it was business. Okay. And I used my money. I gave one man. Said he was going to help me. At that point, I was dealing with depression because oh. he took my money and ran away. Ah. He was telling me to come and visit much, him. Ah, my school fees was fifty something k. Hey, hmm. wow. So he cut with something k. I left. But then it was actually nothing. I didn't really feel like I had um, a part, or I knew I had not discovered myself. Because I can remember when my first stage during the audition, and they asked, "What did you do for a living?" Yeah. I said nothing. <laughs> and the judge looked at me like, "Hello, ma." <laughs> <laughs> Do you think you came here to play? I was like, actually, nothing. I'm being very truthful. So yeah, nothing. I didn't have any. Even during the show, itself, even as I was coming out, I didn't have any this thing. I didn't have <laughs> nothing at all. Nothing. But when you came out, did it change? When I came out, it took me quite um, some time to find myself. I'm still discovering myself i'm still on that path yeah. i don't feel like it's a one year two year three yeah. years thing it takes some people almost a lifetime to actually find themselves Very so true. i'm still on that path i mean i've discovered some things but i still know that i have a lot more i discover new things every day getting into the yeah. house and you know this newfound fame was it something you were looking forward to did you go into it because oh i need this fame for a certain reason or was it something that you just had to embrace hmm. when you came out i think for them it's different do you, know, do you know why? Why? Because when we were going to the house, we did not, we didn't know the impact that the show was gonna have outside the house. Mm. You, you, yeah, facts. Because don't forget though, the last Big Brother Niger was how many years back? That's number one. Number two, I've never watched Big Brother in my life mm. before I went to Big Brother, mm. so I didn't really know why what did you about go? the show. Why did I go? Because mm -hmm. I just I looked at it as vacation, to be honest. Oh. Like I, just, I looked at it as three months. <laughs> so I'm not far from I'm not far from from Alex because. As much as I was DJing, he wasn't going as planned. <laughs> okay. So, I that you know, let me three months away from mm. all this madness. <laughs> yeah. Three months away from all this madness <laughs> was not a bad idea to oh. me. So I'm free food and free. Ah, exactly. We move. We move. <laughs> so, well, I'll start different because uh, my own idea is to define my own self because I was the kind of person that whenever I stepped into a place and I introduced myself, I just had that they just had this bar that oh, so is this kind of person I'm supposed to be? Facts. Yeah. But then again, I'm not exactly that person. I'm, I grew up with that lineage, but it does not mean that that's the person I'm exactly trying to be. I need to still be my own self. Mm -hmm. If not, I won't own my own greatness as much as I want. Mm -hmm. So I was like, ah, what's the number one show that everybody pays attention to? Mm -hmm. Oh, is this show? Right. Can you, do you think you can, you know, optimize the best? Very intentional. <laughs> yes, I'm not going to lie. Mine was intentional. Because, yeah, but, but, but that's what yeah. I'm saying. You, 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 you went in there after seeing what mm -hmm. the impacts that yeah. ours hey, had, he, right? Do you understand? <laughs> not me. Alex, you too. He, Continue. Hold this head back and forth. He's just far, far, far. Now. See, before Speak. Big Brother, mm. for me, yeah. I'd only heard about Big Brother once my whole life. Wow. Oh, wow. And that was because my auntie called me and said, you must vote for Bisola. Wow. 
and I was like, first of all, who is Bisola? Mm. Why am I dating? <laughs> wow. Right, she right, sent me like airtime. <laughs> I know wow. to see this, but I'm very sorry. <laughs> I didn't use the airtime <laughs> for the vote. For sure. Yeah. 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 Not because you didn't vote for that position, but... I just used the airtime. I put it to good use. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, my cousin was using my phone. My techno phone, as I then. And my battery was about 9% or so. And she was scrolling with my data, my hard-end data. Mm -hmm. She was scrolling. All of a sudden, she just stopped. She was like, oh my God, I think you should go for this big brother. Then I didn't know what big brother was. Well, I was upset. Like, my battery is 90%. <laughs> and you're using my battery to browse something that I don't... If, what yeah, what can I go here for? She said, oh, you stay there for three months, you come out, if you win, they'll give you money. I was like, just that. And I was like, any particular. She said, no, just international passport. Let's talk about some of your relationships before the house. Did anything change when you got out of the house? Um, for me, nah. It yeah. remained the same. It, 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 it rocked a bit, mm -hmm. but it now came back why, to Because I, I behaved myself in the house. Eh? Why did it rock a bit when you came out? Mm, because as much as I behaved myself in the house, as I said, there was still one or two, you know, maybe like, yeah, mm. inside the house. Yeah. Someone two touching. Mm. Speak mm. your It's not man aware. Yeah, you are with men and women in the house for how many yeah, months? What do you expect? Months. Come on, bro. Actually. You need, to, you, that you need to, uh, uh, you need to shake bodies. Oh, no. now, so. Yeah, so, but I didn't do anything extra. Mm. Not like this kids. Yeah, I guess Which kids? For me, everything was... Yes, a lot of people started looking at me different. Why? You know, I, I, I'm a boy, don't look. Oh, <laughs> when I now came, I said, oh, so it's because of this, you know, this new fa f um, fame that all of you just want to just want to be friends. So mm -hmm. in its own way, that also put a perspective on life for me. Like, yo, you some people be. just want to use you for what you got at that point yeah. in time and they're going to dump you. And in a way, that also helped me moving forward with the people I work with and I want to associate with. So. Mm. I want to ask you about building a brand after the reality show. Oh, okay. How easy has it been e. to <laughs> e. But many people assume that once you get that fame, <laughs> so even if you do not win, it's very easy for, you know, brands to reach out to you. And you are now a superstar, yeah. so everybody should want to work with you and associate with you. So is that true Wow, or not? fat life. You know, while I was in the house, there was something that some of the celebrities that came, or I will say influential people or, you know, people that came to the house said, Regardless of have as much fame that you amass, if you have a very bad character with it, mm. you ain't got none. Nothing. Fa, 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 fa. <laughs> as you come out of Big Brother, it's like you're starting a brand new company, which is yourself. Mm -hmm. And you have to pay attention to that company wholeheartedly. Your image is everything. Because if you don't project the right image, no brand will pay you good bucks to represent them. And even if you get a brand that wants to pay you a lot, if the brand ain't good enough, how will other brands want to associate with you? Because one good brand can just might as well, might as well just be that turning point mm. for you. So it depends on how you, normally as a normal human being, you really need to accept who you are, know who you are, be aware of yourself. Yeah. Just so you know, I, I got that word, aware of yourself, a couple of minutes before this, ah, you know, this conversation. Ah. I'll tell you, what, you know, she drops on bars. I don't think she even, was even dropping them bars. But, oh, but standard, you, you know, if you're not aware of yourself, know yourself, know your strength, your weaknesses, and all of that, there's no how you can be able to create mm -hmm. a brand new brand. Okay, so this advice I got when I got out of the house. Someone, I can't really remember who in particular told me that. It's not a sprint, mm. it's a marathon, right? So it's a long-term thing you have to don't 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 ever come out of the house and thinking i have to do this now mm. do you understand don't because a lot of times that leads you to trying to do things that you are not really really good what at else for? focus on that okay now for example now alex said she didn't really have anything she was doing outside before the house but she she really did because she said that she was doing like some but some Business. hustles businesses and that so yeah so don't now come out of the house and then leave that thing that you are doing before that was keeping you and then trying to drop him. Because I got a lot of offers. I got offers to do uh, modeling. I got offers to do acting. I got offers to do a lot of different things, right? And <clears throat> I took some, and I, and then after a while, I now realize, nah, calm down. Just be everywhere. Yeah. Chill, chill, just chill. It's easier for you when you started to build from scratch. You're able, your foundation is really strong. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, I lived the life for 21 years, and in three months, you throw me into a new world, and I'm expected to come out and just know exactly what I'm doing. It's not well possible. Stated. Especially well people that are stubborn like me. It was, or oh, it is still really hard building a brand. Like I said, it's a process. 
when you go for Big Brother, especially when I come, like when you come out, people feel like they own you. I mean, I <sighs> voted for you. I should be able to mm. tell you what you. to do. Yes, Next yes. thing you're like, after I finish voting, see how you're talking. Mm. I had um, mm. I had a YouTube video with Kathy one time that I was like, see, you can't come out and tell me that Big Brother made me who I am. I would never agree. Because before Big Brother, I was somebody. And I went in there and came out a better person. Big Brother improved on who I am, but he did not, or Big Brother did not make me who I am. What I did with the Big Brother platform is what is making me who I am. It's still me. And I always say Big Brother was, um, it was like a, I don't know if you say we had a partnership. I give you content, mm. you give me a platform, I build on the platform. It was a very, very significant part of my life. But people try to make it look like if you didn't go for Big Brother, you never make it in life. Never lie. Someone that is supposed to be popular, someone that was supposed to make it in life, you were destined to, you definitely would be. Okay, let's talk about finances. People assume on social media that once you get into the house, you come out richer because you know you have endorsements. Today you're signing this, tomorrow you're signing that. So they just expect you See. to live a certain way to follow a particular lifestyle. See, you can be rich for Big Brother, you come out and be broke. Bam! Fast! Oh, ah, you know dang. what? <laughs> now, let's forget that. Let's just say my parents were not there for me. And I'm this girl that has been working all her life. You know, I've been saving up for things, things, plans I have for my life. Then a big brother comes along and I go for big brother. All the money I have in my bank account, I'll bring it out and say, guys, I have the money, you can pay for me. I'll now go in there. After spending all the money, I worked so hard mm. to get. Mm -hmm. I probably have like, let me say, six million naira in my account. I was living with a friend. I was comfortable. I was mm. even planning to maybe rent my little 800,000 naira apartment and buy my small car and continue building. That six million naira, we all know, is not enough for the books, especially when you go far. You spend way more than mm -hmm. that. Then I come out and my bank account is empty. For like the first one month, I'm waiting for one company or the other to come and say, let me endorse you. The <coughs> man now endorses you. They now pay you your first um, few millions. And I, I have to get, now at this point, I have to get a house. Because I need to take nice pictures. Because my picture has to be nice on my mm. page. People cannot know that I'm living in a face me, I face you. Because I went for Big Brother. Yes. A certain level of richness ah. is expected of me. Now I go and rent this kind of house. With the first money they pay me for an endorsement deal. The second one comes. The house I'm staying in, I have to pay for life. Because you move to the richer people place. You, you have to pay for a lot of you things. And then, makeup. <laughs> I always want yeah. like, you know how to, at some point, people want to do makeup for you for free. But after a while, it's just like, Auntie, mm -hmm. even you said. You <laughs> <don't want to laughs> <say. laughs> be like, ah, okay, I need to pay this person something. I'll now start to pay you 25k per makeup. Because somebody will say, ah, now. The first day I did my nails with that big brother, it was a friend of mine that saved me. If not, I've been on Insta blog. I refuse to pay. I do my nails in school, five hundred naira for the normal one. When I want to do the one for Shakara, I do it for one five. No one. Then I come to fix my nails, and you finish, and you tell me I should pay fourteen thousand five hundred naira. Oh. You will remember the exact figure. Accurately, <laughs> and I was like, yo, it's not possible now. This is not how life is. Oh Why? Because I'm Alex. I said I must pay. I have to call somebody. I'm like, is this how we will do this Lagos? I told them to give me broom. Green broom, let me start sweeping. This money will not leave my account. It's for nails. <laughs> for nails. <laughs> but then, this is like how much you have to spend on things. So, when you even get these endorsement deals, the things that you even spend them on, the kind of life you have to... One dress is costing you like 150k, 45,000, 30k. But before, I would go to Yaba, and with 20,000 naira, my wardrobe is full. One trouser mm. is 800. Honestly. So 300 naira. I'm not saying I'm broke. I mean, I'm comfortable. <coughs> but what I'm saying is that a lot of you people are going through a lot. Mm. Especially for this yeah. show. Sometimes it's actually very hard for people that didn't make it so far in the game to get things as much as we that went very far get. But then, well, we went for the same thing. If they see you, you're still this person, big brother. Mm. Why does this person big brother have a car when this person big brother does not tell have you. a car? You see, being in the public eye drives a lot of comments. People feel like they have to talk about you. Right. It's also part of what gives you fame and makes you relevant because people are talking about you. Mm. But let's be honest, there are always positive and lots of negative comments as well. How do you handle it all after being a part of the reality show? Mine is very simple. Mm -hmm. You switch it off. Oh wow! I ain't got time. You everybody has time to their own perspective. Feel free to say what you want to say. If you can't be constructive about it, 
Mm. All right. If you want to be constructive about it, welcome on board. Because I'm of, I'm out here to make mistakes that I can manage and learn from. If I'm doing something normally, and it is a problem to you, that's normal. I've been doing it normally. Remember, normal. But now you're not pointing out because I'm not a celebrity. Is something wrong with you? She ain't gonna share. I'm sorry. I've had a lot of people that come and write something or that sort of things, and I'm oh my shoe. <laughs> The reason why I can't entirely blame them is that even me as I am here like this, it do me sometimes. Mm. Because sometimes I just see a picture of somebody going of like, why can't I? Fat! I'm a human being now. Wait, human you know, being I'm also, that's why I understand this, it, we are humans, but now come pull yourself to that point where you can control yourself right. or your emotions. Right. That's one thing I took out of the show, how to control my, my emotions and tolerate people. Facts, facts, yeah. I agree. It is what it is. Do um, uh, you know one thing? One thing I'm going to say is that it's not, it's not easy. That's Actually. number one. And that's why I keep telling people, before you, are, you want to go into Big Brother, I want to go into Big Brother. Look, the pressure involved in this thing is not for everybody. Oh. Not everybody can survive it. I'm going to tell you that out of everyone that's gone to Big Brother, I would say at least on average, I might be wrong, though, maybe 60% have gone into depression. You are not one way or the other. You are not like, not that, they're not, they might not you're still not be in depression, but they've gone through it <laughs> one time like that. Standard. It was crazy. Standard. And that's the thing, there's so much pressure. For me, it comes in my mood. Basically. All I do in my own part is I beg, like, please, you're allowed to troll. Sometimes I do things that deserve trolling. <laughs> troll me, mm -hmm. but troll me with conscience. Mm. Let's talk about the positive <laughs> sides of being a part of a reality show. You know, there are perks to these things, we all know. There are times that it looks really glamorous on social media. So right. please feel yeah. free to share some of the facts. Too. See, I feel like I have more positives than no, of course, than than negative. Negative. life. I was, in fact, I was always easier for the ladies that go on reality. Hey. Oh, God bless you. Hey. God bless you. I, I said this thing sometimes oh. people they vex from me. Please, bro, hey, they they yeah. vex from me. Yeah. See, you are the oh. first person to be honest about oh. this thing. It's actually always easier for the ladies. <laughs> but on the second side, it's also easier for the guys to make more money. Hmm? Is it easier for the ladies? Eventually. eventually. Because in the ladies long, are there okay. living in the whole glamorous um, side of it. These guys take their times to now go down right. through the foundation and walk. Bali, I was really shocked to hear you talk about the mental side effects right. of being a part of the <gasps> reality show or being in the public eye. And mm -hmm. I just want you to explain further. Uh, 100% is the pressure, I think. Now, think about it. You come out of the house, everybody loves you, everybody wants you around. Do you understand? You're going to places that before they'll be bouncing you, and now, as you reach there, there are pointings on the floor for you. You understand? <laughs> like, Absolutely, it's crazy. Do you understand? So, you have access to all those places, and your life now is glamorous, it's beautiful, everything is fine, all paid for, right? And then you're now going to the next phase, which is things are now beginning to die down. Mm. That stuff, you now realize that that stuff was not real, bro. That was just like. That was just a, a part-time kind of journey start. Now the real thing is setting in, the real life. As they, are, well, as they sharply announce the next audition, <laughs> or the next <laughs> set, <laughs> ding, ding, like things, are, wow. things are moving. Then you now enter the deep states. I call it the deep states. That's what, <laughs> when, <laughs> when the next one premieres, they are now forgotten. You. <laughs> so you are now in the deep state. So yeah, wow. so that, that also is now the next phase, which I feel I, I want to believe a lot of housemates have gone through. I feel like I've had to deal with my depression state twice. Wow. After the reality the, TV show. The house, yeah. Because at first, the first one was when I came back from South Africa. I didn't know where I didn't know where I was going. I didn't even know what was happening. I was sitting in the, in the airplane calling my mom. Hello mommy, you were back to Nigeria, I'm at the airport. First of all, I left I left my um, two thousand naira in my account before going. So what I was planning was when I come out. I will now use that 2000 naira, go to my auntie's house from airport to Sule. Then um, I will now look for a way to get money to go and see. Because I didn't know, like I said, I didn't know anything about I came out to this reality. We were at the airport, they were keeping us at one corner. Security, all right, check, move. I'm like, yo, hold on, what's happening? Because when I called my mom, she said, I am at the airport, I am waiting for you. I could hear music. I'm like, wait, 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 what's going on? Like. It was really hard for me to understand. Then for the security that was holding me on this side and holding, I said they want to beat, they want to beat hard, they want to beat. Like, Wait, why do you want to beat me? What did I do? Then I came out. They took me into one room where we were all waiting for our parents, and I can, I can say that ten people at least came to say they were my mom. 
What? Just because they wanted to see me. They're like, she's my daughter. They were not, I was not sitting there. Is this your mom? No. Is this your mom? <laughs> no. <laughs> Until my mother came in. <laughs> and I laid <laughs> on the floor. Now, everyone that, those that were looking at me from outside saw it as me being dramatic. You did not understand what I was going, going through. through at that point. Right. How many times I had to say no? And then finally my mom comes. It was just so much for me. I still have this video of when they were trying to put me in the car. That my mother used her body to cover me. And someone was holding my hair from this side. And security was pushed. Like, it was <laughs> so hard. So I went into serious depression like this. For real. The week after that. First of all, I'm going for media rounds. You guys are forcing me to wear very painful, uncomfortable shoes because it was hard to find my size. I have to deal with that one. I have to deal with the bashing I get when I now take off the shoes and wear my slippers. I have to deal with me laughing and them saying, no, you should laugh like a celebrity. I had to deal with a lot of that. And then I now had to deal with being compared <laughs> To be, and I'm like, yo, see, let me tell you something. People that I went into this place with, some of them are not my age mates too. When you're telling me you are grown, see, I still used to think of my age sometimes. Right. I will now wear clothes, maybe like like ten girls that went there. You now post over say, who wore it better? <laughs> 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 How would you, would you be doing that? I'm not be struggling. In as much as I don't want to, in as much as I don't want to, I don't want to keep tabs on what other people are doing. You force me. You force all of us yes. to keep tabs on ourselves start you, comparing. because we're trying not to, to do what the other person I'll has done you. in order not to start social media drama. How, how did you deal with all of this? I cried. Aww. Yes, I think I should get a degree for that. <laughs> At this point, I've owned it. <laughs> I, cry, I cry when I'm happy. I cry when I'm sad. I cry when I'm stressed. That's the only way for me to get it out. And that's because I am strong. Because if I keep it in me sometimes, I'm dealing with more. I will be losing weight. So I cried. There were times when for a whole day, I'll be crying. My friends, I came out with about two very close friends from that place. They tried everything possible. So they would take me out, they would buy me food, they would buy me clothes, buy me bags, buy me many things. I would just be crying. Alex, why are you crying? I can tell you that I don't know. I, I was just crying. I think I cried. This time I cried for like one week straight. I lost so much weight. I just woke up in the morning. I didn't eat for the first three days. Once I realized that I was getting very weak. And I said I had to take water. I said I had to eat. I just wanted to die. I just wanted something to happen. So like, you just say, oh, she slept. Oh, she did not wake up. Let it not be that I took um, poison. Mm -hmm. But she just slept and didn't wake up. I was really praying for death at that then. Because the pressure was so much. And I, and I called Bisola, God bless you. I called Bisola and I spoke to her and she told me, she told me what to expect, so I was ready. Ebuka told me what to expect and I always use Ebuka as an example, I'm like, see, oh, see how many years ago he went, yeah. he took time to build right. himself. Mm -hmm. So I was right. like, at the time when we were, when another said they were going in, people were not really even talking about him, but the man was building himself. Mm -hmm. And now even if he's not hosting these shows or anything, you don't really know what and what he has done as a oh, foundation. He course. is good. I'm not going to say he has all the money in this level. That man has put in so much work into himself mm. as yeah. a brand, yeah. Yeah. which is what I now said I was going to do. You, you've really gone through a lot uh. after the show. If you look back mm. at before the show and you had the opportunity not to go for the audition, would you grab it or would you still grab go what? for the audition and you know go through all of this all over again? Like I said, God has like, our lives planned. Why would I see God's plan for me and say no? If God brings the show to my footstep again, I would still take it. Oh wow, great. Like I said, the opportunity comes first. Then what you do with it now matters. Right. Dei, would you take the opportunity all over again? Would you go for Can you I went by myself. <laughs> 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 it's not as if they just show up and we're auditioning for the show. And we noticed that you are strong. Yeah, we like your person. Yeah, you know, I was the go away. All right. And this was this wasn't the first one I went for. I tried to go for oh, the, wow. the year when Karen went. Ah, I tried to go for oh that. Yeah? Year. I can't remember. I didn't even go for a friend's wedding because of that particular ah. audition. I dropped oh, on the way yeah. to the wedding. Oh, like, oh. And it was they like, as if no matter, give me, like, the spirit is with me. I have to go for this thing. The spirit is with me. Oh. Ah. <laughs> Funny. But this one, I'm not going to lie, it was smooth sailing for me. That's why I said, I'm, On a final <laughs> note, what do you want people to take from this episode? People in general, right? The audience. Of. The viewers. Look, if you are, if you are reasoning to go into. I'm as it's okay, so it's, it's not about necessarily going to a reality show, but if you're thinking of actually building something and becoming somebody tomorrow, 
stuff. Right. You need to expect a lot of things are going to come your way that you are not used to. Mm. So there's going to be a lot of neg negativity. There's going to be a lot of people that, people from far and wide are going to call you that you don't know. The main thing is you need to understand that you need to um, be able to handle these things. Um, nothing too fancy. Life is not the beginning and ending of any show. You still have to be who you are when you have to be you. You can't be anybody else but you. In the words of Dr. Seuss, nobody can be you other than you. All right. You just have to be. You have to stay true to who you are. So, if you is wearing bathroom slippers because that's comfortable, wear it. If you is wearing shoes just because you're comfortable, do that. But don't act. Don't be somebody else that you are not. All out of the, the mindset that I need to be. I have mm -hmm. to. Don't pull the I'm among card. So always remember, start being who you are and continue that way. Improve, be better, aspire to be much more than yourself. Be in competition with yourself. Not another person, not be in competition with yourself. Try to be better than yourself five minutes before, an hour before. Try and always be better than that. And trust me, everything will fall into place as long as you're grateful for who you are and where you ex expect yourself to be. Well, for me, coming from me and how I have wired myself to think, I would say that opportunity doesn't come once. I do not believe that opportunity comes but once. Opportunity comes a lot of times in many different ways and in many different forms. Opportunity comes first. What you do with the opportunity is the main thing. So when you lose one opportunity, don't think another one would not come. And when it comes, take it. And as you're taking it, be ready for all the consequences. And for you to handle the consequences easier, do not lose yourself. From this conversation, yes. I think I've learned that being in the public eye comes with a lot of benefits, but it's not all rosy at the end of the day. It comes with a mm. whole lot of sacrifices right. and a lot of pressure. Right. <laughs> Thank you for this. watching. Feel free to join the conversation in the comment section below. Follow us on our social media platforms. I'll see you in the next episode. Thank you.